What percentage of the world's water is stored in freshwater lakes, rivers, and swamps? The correct answer is that the amount of water contained in freshwater lakes, rivers, and swamps represents only one hundredth of one percent of the Earth's estimated 1,386,000,000 cubic kilometer total water volume. 97.5 percent of the Earth's water is salt water. Another 1.8 percent is stored as snow and ice. This leaves 0.77 percent as liquid fresh water. But the vast bulk of this liquid fresh water, over 99 percent, is underground and some of that is unobtainable. Less than 1 percent of the Earth's liquid fresh water is stored in surface water bodies. In North America, over 97 percent of our fresh water is underground. Freshwater storage in lakes, rivers, wetlands, and reservoirs represents only 27,000 cubic kilometers, or 0.61 percent of North America's surface freshwater, and much of this is in Canada, which is home to nearly 50 percent of the world's lakes. These charts show how limited our freshwater resources are. The next two lesson panels describe how water moves within and between surface and groundwater storage. You'll also learn how our life-sustaining water supplies are being affected by human activities. The water cycle accounts for the transfer of water from the oceans to the land via atmospheric processes. All of our fresh water originates with precipitation. But human actions can significantly influence the quality and quantity of fresh water that will be available in the future. Precipitation affects a watershed both at and below the ground surface. Surface water comprises all rivers and streams, lakes and reservoirs, or any other water on the Earth's surface, such as spring water or overland flow from a precipitation event. A large portion of precipitation percolates or infiltrates into the ground. Some flows relatively quickly beneath the surface to the nearest stream channel. This subsurface storm flow moves through spaces within the soil. Some water percolates down into the long-term groundwater storage. This groundwater can supply a stream during long dry spells and is called base flow. Groundwater is typically found within aquifers, which are water-bearing underground volumes of rock and sand. Researchers estimate that 30 percent of surface stream flow comes from groundwater sources. Additionally, about 50 percent of all drinking water in the U.S. comes from groundwater. The top of a groundwater aquifer is called the water table. Sometimes the top of an aquifer is confined by impermeable layers of rock or compacted clay. Springs flow from perched aquifers, which occur above elevated impermeable layers. Although surface water and groundwater are often treated as separate resources, they actually form an interconnected system. Surface water bodies can gain water from or provide water to groundwater sources like aquifers. So water removal from either source can affect the other. Pollutants in surface water can also travel between surface and underground water stores, degrading water quality in either direction. Aquifers are large areas of underground water storage. The Ogallala Aquifer, our nation's largest, stretches underground beneath the high plains from the Dakotas to the Texas Panhandle, reaching depths of up to 1,300 feet. This immense aquifer underlies 174,000 square miles in parts of eight states and provides about 30 percent of the groundwater used for irrigation in the U.S. Guess how long it's been since water in the deepest part of the Ogallala Aquifer percolated into the ground from the surface? The correct answer is 8,000 years. Depending on soil composition, water movement into and within an aquifer can be very slow. Water drawn from deep within the Ogallala Aquifer is ancient indeed. Hydrologists can estimate the rate of recharge or freshwater infiltration into an aquifer from the surface. If the rate of extraction exceeds the rate of recharge, the aquifer will shrink. This is what's happening in many critical water aquifers around the world. Parts of the Ogallala Aquifer in Texas, for example, have been drawn down over 150 feet from pre-development levels. U.S. aquifers are being depleted for both agricultural and drinking water purposes in many regions. 
Groundwater decline has become a significant issue facing many of our major population centers and may be a newsmaker in your media market. For example, many groundwater sources along the Atlantic coast from Massachusetts to Florida are experiencing saltwater intrusion caused by depleting the freshwater volume. Pumping since the 1920s has caused significant declines in water levels of the Sparta Aquifer, which underlies parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Extensive groundwater pumping in the Houston, Texas area has lowered water levels by 400 feet, causing extensive land surface subsidence. Pumping for drinking water used by over 8.2 million people in the Chicago area has lowered groundwater levels by as much as 900 feet. Groundwater levels in the vicinities of Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona, have declined by 300 to 500 feet. This has resulted in significant surface subsidence in many locations. Since surface water supplies are limited and groundwater supplies are shrinking in many areas, water conservation has become a necessity for many communities. Overuse affects water quality as well. Excessive surface withdrawals reduce stream flow, resulting in erosion, sedimentation, and damage to aquatic ecosystems. Excessive groundwater withdrawals can cause pollutants and or salt water to be drawn into aquifers. An excess irrigation washes sediments, fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides into downstream watersheds. What is being done to help balance water needs in our country? Restoring balance is accomplished through two main avenues. One, water reuse and reclamation. And two, reducing consumption. Water supplies can be restored through changes to land use practices that help to return water to the ecosystem. For example, pavement, soil compaction, and vegetation removal cause precipitation to run off instead of percolate into the soil to recharge groundwater aquifers. Different materials and land use practices can help capture and store more runoff. Communities can help by protecting critical watersheds and drinking water sources when approving new land uses, by preserving natural areas, and by taking steps to minimize the impacts of new construction on the environment. What can individuals do? There are many steps that individuals can take to reduce water consumption and help protect our nation's precious water resources. Your role as a broadcaster is critical, since raising awareness and educating the public is an indispensable first step toward improved water conservation. Encourage your viewing audience to conserve water through such simple means as installing low-flush toilets and low-flow faucets in shower heads, watering yards more efficiently, or switching to native or xeriscape landscaping. Developing smarter water use habits such as running the dishwasher only when full. Turn faucets off when brushing teeth. Sweeping rather than hosing off sidewalks, etc. Although these actions may seem trivial, they can have a big impact when added up across your viewing area.